Hi everyone, welcome back to another Simple Planes video. In this video, I will explain some updates for the SWL120 since my last video, work on some of the advanced systems such as the electrical and hydraulic systems, and improve the performance by modifying the FMC. So, let's get started. First, there's one thing I forgot to mention in my last video. One of the changes I made is to the fuel dumping particles. The fuel dumping system on the s 120 of course actually works and has particle effects to simulate fuel dumping. To make these particle effects, I was using the Ancient Air Pollution mod, which predates the Smoke Trails mod. I was using this over the Smoke Trails mod because it supported rudimentary funky trees inputs in the form of activators. Now, I have managed to make my own particle emitter, which is literally a copy of the Smoke Trails mod. In fact, in Unity it is the Smoke Trails mod, just with an input controller to allow for code. This means I no longer have to somehow make the air pollution mod available to players who want to download and fly the SWL 120. I also published this mod separately, called Smoke Trails 2, because the Smoke Trails emitter is useful for other things than just a fuel dumping emitter. For example, to make smoke trails using funky trees, such as, say, a smoke emitter that only turns on when airspeed is above a certain value, among many other examples. I didn't just copy the mod and add an input controller to it, I did a few small changes. Well, that's really all I did, but I did do one more thing. I also changed the texture of the particle, so it better matches what fuel would look like, compared to the normal smoke trails mod. I also tried to make it look okay at night, although this plane doesn't really look too good at night, but in the daytime, when you have cooling just to activate 6, but when you have the funky trees active to dump fuel, this is what it looks like. And now, on to the uh, more advanced systems. The IE cast screen has 8 screens, which are the engine information display, the hydraulics screen, the electrical system screen, the door screen, the anti ice screen, the fuel screen, the flight control services screen, and the landing gear screen. I'm not going to talk about the, these five screens, which are the door, the gear, flight control, fuel, and the ice screens. I'll leave them for a future video. I am going to talk about the electrical system and the hydraulic system. As my goal for the s 120 is to be fairly realistic, I have designed an entirely simulated hydraulic system and electrical system. Each system in the plane can draw power, a varying amount of power, from the main electrical bus which can be powered by many generators. Each generator has a variable output based on the speed of its source function, and if there's not enough power to power all the systems, then load shedding occurs. What this will look like on the electrical screen is there will be some dots to indicate some generators, such as the engine 1, engine 2, and the APU generators, the batteries, uh, ground power input, and the ram turbine. That will all provide power to a main electrical bus, which will be displayed in the diagram somewhere, with some text or something. And then I will have another small diagram somewhere, which lists all the load setting items. For the hydraulic system, I have also made this quite realistic. I'm not going to try and explain how this works, I barely understood it myself. In fact, I'm not sure most of this is accurate, I just tried to do what I could based on research. And this will, in a similar fashion to the electrical system, display engine generators, ground input, and rainbow turbine, and will also display, I guess I'm going to call it the uh, main distribution block, to all of the different hydraulic systems. So what I'll do now is I will add the overhead panel into this file, so I can control stuff. And I'll also add some basic diagrams for each of the generators, and also improve this diagram a bit. And that has all been done. I've kind of done a little bit more. So I added this. I also added everything for the center panel back in. So I basically have the entire cockpit, I guess, aside from the uh, sound box, but that's really it. So I have the entire cockpit in the in this flight model file. So it sort of is the entire plane except for the interior. And I've completely redesigned this diagram. I've taken out the plane in flavor of just a 
central block with a bunch of other things. So instead of a, like a physical, like bird's eye view of the diagram of the plane, I just have a diagram of every single generator or power source, which all feeds in through these markers into like the central bus. I have a max load bar, which doesn't work right now; it just works with throttle. But it'll tell you, it'll like it'll show you how much of the max load you've already used in your own load which is not coded yet I also got the uh, generator codes working so if I debug the expression say I'll do an engine so say engine 1 gen 1 that's the number 1 generator for the number 1 engine if I just go ahead and start up the engine Till I have the engine dials module back. This is my rudimentary engine speed gauge. So just like the old version, the generators cannot function, uh, the electrical generators, cannot function until the engine has fully started. So as the engine just started right there, and as outlined in my Excel spreadsheet, the generators have a variable output. It starts at 175 kilowatts, and as the engine power increases, we just add the parking brake. As the engine power increases, it goes all the way up to 250 kilowatts. All the other generators function the same way. The APU core, or the APU, is always just at 250 because the APU is just on and off. The RAM air turbine, which I'll just show at a final approach. The VAT generator works off airspeed, so I turn it on here. Rated 100, 100 kilowatts, because we're at the maximum speed that it will produce. Uh, I should probably have some hydraulics as well. If I say slow down somewhat, the VAT gen output will decrease. Its range, as outlined in the Excel spreadsheet, is 87 kilowatts to 100 kilowatts. Ground power, just like the APU, is a constant. If I just debug it, ground power is a constant of 250 kilowatts. Now, hydraulics, that's a little easier to explain than the electrical system. What I've done is every single source on this panel here outputs 0 0.5 as a value for the smooth which is how fast everything will work. So if I only have, say, one source, such as one APU generator, then the speed of everything will be halved. If I have two or more, it'll just be capped at one, which is what it currently is. So this is what the speed of one looks like, being spawned as you can see. And since I haven't actually checked everything, if I only have 0 0.5 as a smooth, some stuff works, like say the rudder expand, rudder rotates half of its full deflection, and spoilers work slowly. But a lot of other stuff does not work at all. I'll need to fix this. Shouldn't be too hard. I'll just do it off camera. And the other thing I'll do off camera right now is I'll make it so everything here will work. And now, what do I mean by that? What I mean is each of these boxes that has what either one, two, or plus, so where the cursor is, these boxes, these boxes, and these th six boxes, each of those boxes will be green when the corresponding generator is available for use. Not when the generator is on, but when it's available for use. So right now, even if I turn them off, the engine one generators, the APU generators, and the ground power those are available for use, so 
this will be green and these four will be green even if they're not on now this will also tell me what's on or not these filled in white boxes just above or below the other boxes they will be hollow if the generator is not enabled and they'll be as they are right now because I haven't coded anything they'll be filled in when the corresponding generator is on and actually providing power I'm going to explain how the actual load system and load shedding system will work after I've fixed the hydraulic system and added the code to this screen so I'll just go ahead and do that and that has all been done I fixed most of the hydraulics so elevators, vito, ailerons and sound spoilers work if I make it half pressure then this will now display pressure to indicate that it's only half of the full pressure and that would work as expected with the elevators but it just takes a lot longer to get to its desired position same with the elevator uh, ailerons the inboard spoilers also work slowly as well and the outboard spoilers also work as well the landing gear is completely broken I have no idea how the landing gear even works anymore so I just put them in a separate file and I'm going to work on that later not in this video the flaps but they sort of work the extension speed of the actual flap parts not the fairings but the actual flaps works fine but if I were to say retract them you can see the outboard fairings retract twice as fast as they should be on this low setting that shouldn't be too hard of a fix but I'm actually running short of time here so I'm not going to do that in this video and that's all I'm going to do for hydraulics I'm just going to focus on the electrical system now I rearranged the code for the display a bit I reuse the code for just the core layout on the hydraulics and electrical screens which is it's, since it's the same thing you have six generators and the main just bus diagram now for the electrical display everything works as I explained just before where green indicates that a system is available for use but whether or not it's active or not just means that it's available and ready for use and if this is filled in that means that the corresponding generator is actively providing power this doesn't take too much code and I know this is quite a bit of code but it's really not the FMC is like many 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 pages of code now I'm going to focus on the actual electrical loads the way I'll do this is I'll create a variable somewhere in this file and I'll just say put it below the batteries so I'll just create a new variable called say electrical to total power load then I'll create one called total power supply and I'll create another one called target power load and a fourth one called load shed stage the total power supply which I can just do easily right now is just the sum of every input device like every single source of power I can actually steal that from the code in here which is this code here this code this display is stuff in kilowatts total power supply I'm just going to multiply this by 1000 to get this in watts that's a power supply now the total power load and target power load are going to be interesting the target power load which I'm, which I'm going to do first or at least to demonstrate how I'm going to do it will tell me how much power if I had say infinite power to use how much power I should be drawing which combines the sum of every single system in the entire plane each system has a variable wattage so I'll just start with something simple I can actually remember the variable name of which is just say avionics I'll multiply this by 2000 and then say I can add more to this so say anti-collision lights according to my spreadsheet they draw 200 watts so I'll put that in and so on so I just have system name times however many watts it draws and then add more systems so I'll just go ahead and add all the other systems and that has been done while I was doing this I was thinking about how I'm going to implement load shedding and battery power and here's my idea so 
this, this valuable load shed stage is going to basically be on the spreadsheet what state we're in. So let's say, actually, I'll just add a new column. These are the different stages of load shed. So if we're at stage one, for example, then we turn off wing anti ice. Now, if the expected power draw, like the total target power draw, exceeds the still exceeds the supplied power, then we go into stage two, and so on. I need to code it so I can never be like at stage nine and still having more more draw than I have supply. And the way I'll do this is I'll have a separate system for batteries. So the batteries combined can supply 20,000 kilowatts, which is nowhere near enough to power all the systems. So I'll have a separate system, as I just said, and I'll call it, say, battery electrics, and that system will only be able to power all of the lights in the cockpit. So, for example, all of the, like, info lights and all these buttons, all, all the avionics, and all of the cockpit lights here, which don't draw much power. Then I can only supply power to fuel pumps and the APU stud. And of course, if you want more power, then you can just start the APU or enable ground power. Before I go any further, I might as well test this to make sure it all works. And there we go. So our maximum load, which is really the power supply, works, and our, al our load also works. If I turn on, say, more systems, load increases. If we turn on the APU, or say ground power, the load increases a bit, and the maximum load increases a bit. The APU is almost starting, so we'll just watch the load drop on the APU starter. There it is. The APU starter is no longer on. You can see here our APU uh, electrical generators now become available, so I can turn them on. Now they're on. So now I've verified that the basic systems work. We can now go ahead and further them through the variables. Currently, we do have a display that tells us how much power we're drawing and how much power we can supply. But if we say turn off all the generators, our load far exceeds our supply. I could just take the easy route and shut off the electrics if load exceeds the maximum load. But of course, I'm not going to do that. I want to make this realistic. So now I need to implement load shed. I've just been working on the electrical system for a bit, and I have some prototype code for the battery electrics variable. Battery electrics takes power from both batteries, and then if anything else from the electric system is on, then the electric system also supplies power to battery electrics because of how the code would work. So everything that runs off battery electrics will only use the battery electrics variable. So I just need to make sure that has power so, so it'll still work. That probably doesn't make much sense. So just to give you an example, say here, all the cockpit lights will use the battery electrics variable instead of the electrics variable. And I need to make sure that even if the battery is turned off, if there's other generators providing power, then battery electrics still has power because these systems only use it as a reference. Battery electrics will also power all of the indicators on these buttons. For example, one of the galley power buttons. Instead of allowing the electrics to show on, it will instead use battery electrics. So basically, what I want to happen is if you're only using battery power, you can only see the status of all the systems in the cockpit, and you can have avionics, but nothing else on the actual plane will work. No lights, no engines, no interior stuff, so no like, cabin lights and power. All you can do is start the APU to get more power. Let's put in all of these variables for the cockpit lights. What else is the fuel pumps? So say, where would they went here? Battery electrics. And then the APU dial, that just relies on fuel pumps to start. However, I'm going to change that. So 20,000 kilowatts is what both batteries provide combined. The systems that rely on battery electrics, all of them when they're all turned on, draw less than 20,000 kilowatts. No, oh, sorry, 20 watts. No, 20, 20 kilowatts. However, the systems do draw more than 10,000 watts. The APU starter requires 12 kilowatts to start. More than one battery can provide at all. So what I'm going to do is I will start the APU from starting if you only have 10 kilowatts available, and then a message will pop up somewhere on this EIE cast display saying that the APU cannot be started because there's not enough power. 
This is much easier than implementing a whole load shared system for batteries. In fact, we can just implement this now. So, EPU fuel, we'll just say plus zero, and battery electrics equals one. So battery electrics must be equal to one for the APU fuel to be started. I think we're actually getting close to having the electrical system finished. I just need to add the load shedding feature. I'll just also add some stuff here for saying battery electrics, just so I can test that. I'll just put two galley powered things on it for now, so I can just run that and see what happens. Batteries on electrics master, no source. However, I haven't coded this button to work yet. And of course, stuff breaks. Why does stuff break? Let's test this. Debug expression, battery the electrics is zero. Why is it zero? It appears to be zero because this is horribly broken. Well, it's not that bad broken, I just put in some spaces somehow. I think if I reload that, then it will work. While I'm here, I can also fix the electrics master button. Electrics equals one. I'll just make a battery electrics because battery electrics is always on when there's power to the aircraft. The battery is on. There we go. I'll need to fix this as well, but the on button works now. And the cockpit lights work. And other stuff does not work, which is good. That's our intended behavior. Then the tank pumps work. I'll just debug the APU core so I can end the fuel. So I can check that they're working correctly. APU fuel is one. If I turn them off, then it's not one. If I start the APU, then it starts normally. I just debug electrics as well, so I can check that. It is zero, which is also intended behavior. And as soon as we turn on the APU generators, then other systems work. Avionics, I'll need to fix that as well. But our basic behavior does in fact work. Now what happens if I turn off one battery? I'll just turn off everything else. So I have only one battery on. I still have power to the systems that I did get working. Try and start the APU. Nothing happens. Which is also intended behavior, which is good. Now for the probably fourth round of debugging at this point, we can make avionics based off of battery electrics. I think that was everything that I wanted to fix. And while I'm here, I can also update some of the battery variables. So I want battery one to just be, um, to just have the loads of the systems that should have. Actually, I can make this simpler and just give it the total power load. I think, yeah, total power load because of how the variables work. So total power load tells me what is actually drawing power. And since the batteries can only be giving power if electrics is not on so therefore total power automatically only has battery electrics when only the batteries are on that probably doesn't make sense whatsoever but i understand it i think total power load and that does include the apu dial once again we load the file and see what works and everything appears to be working. This display is on, these work, both of these go down equally, or not equally if I turn one off. If you can be started, and if I turn one battery off, the APU can be started. Why is this? Because APU fuel is one, why is APU fuel one? Because battery electrics is still one. I can upgrade this code. Instead of electrics, instead of battery electrics equals one, I can have that one two on equals one or electrics equals one. So either both batteries have to be on or the electrics can be on, indicating there is at least one generator working. Now to just reload that. Battery one on, battery two on, electrics master on. Lights work, 
by the way, one or whatever one off. APU dial cannot be started. Good. Even if I add fuel, the APU fuel is still zero and the APU cannot be started. As soon as I add a second battery, they can be started. Turn it off. Then there's again, once again, no fuel and it turns off. And now it's time to work on the actual load shedding behavior. I'm just going to copy all of my new variables, all of them, over to my variables list, all the way at the bottom, all of this. Now I can work on this variable here. I'll just debug some stuff before I leave here. Debug expression, total, power supply, target, power, load, and the other one is total power load, which is currently the same as this one. I just turned on every single system in the plane, so I can max out the power load and do some testing. The way I'll calculate the current mode for the load setting is I'll subtract the target power load from the total power load. Sorry, the total power supply. Minus target power load. If this number is positive, then you don't need any load setting. Actually, I can already start working on the number. So, if this greater than zero, then just you're good to go. No load setting required. I think this will be easier to work on in the air. I actually have some power. Just need some. Everything is broken. Actually, no, it isn't. Hmm. I actually think I will actually need to use battery electric for some of these buttons, mainly the hydraulics, because that does happen to work if you somehow have an engine running and there's no main power. So I will probably work on that. There's also pneumatics and air conditioning, which again just have air. There isn't much else though. That will be for future me to worry about, not right now. Right, so I've just got the, the ram air turbine and no batteries on. And I'll turn off the APU as well. It's just the ram air turbine. And now it's time for me to compare my information on the load shedding table to the power build. So stage one, I need to do some testing myself, so I'll just go and bite this variable off camera. I think I have something. What this code does is it first checks if the total power supply minus the target power load is greater than zero. If that's true, then just don't do any load shedding. And then slowly step through from one to nine, the different load shed stages, which will affect different things. So while it may seem like you'll just jump right to 9, what mode setting 1 will shed some load, for example the anti-acing, then mode shed 2 will shed some power from the galleys and so on. Because of how the electrical system is designed, I only need to change the power draw, at least mostly, inside this variable, because a lot of the variables don't do anything. Let's try and find it. Now I need to repeat this for all the other variables that have load shedding. I think I've actually finished the load shedding, which is basically almost the entire electrical system as a whole. So if I turn off all the APU stuff and start the ram air turbine, and have, say, anti-ice on, then the load shedding mode, this variable here, drops to 9, which means the maximum load the, like the ma max load shedding it can do, so full load shedding. The total power load is a little lower than it should be, but I think I know why. And that's because the only thing we can do is affect the anti-ice. If I just turn, if I turn on some more stuff, well, I officially have no idea what I'm doing here because I do not know why this isn't working. I think I'll just add this to the list of stuff to just experiment with and fix eventually. So at least for now I'm calling the electrical system somewhat complete. I have some basic variables done and the total power draw and supply variables are working. I can also make this bar work. One second. And that has now been done. There's currently some load. 
and if I just start the APU, it goes up all, almost all the way, and as soon as the APU starts, the APU starter is now no longer drawing power, the APU generators become available, we can turn them on, and as soon as we turn them on, we get more power. If I turn on the intensive systems, such as anti-ice, which is mainly the most intensive system, then we're drawing a reasonable amount of power, and same idea if we turn on more systems or turn on more generators. And at least for this video, that will be it for the electrical system and hydraulic system. I have a bunch of bugs that I need to fix off camera because I don't know what they are, and it'll probably take me a while to fix. The last thing I want to work on today is performance. Now currently, the s 120 has some performance issues. I was hoping when I first started this project to run the plane at at least 60 frames per second with the full plane. I am currently getting 25 frames per second, which is not ideal at all. I have many ways that I could improve performance, but in this video I'm just going to focus on the flight management computer and the screens. For the screens, one of the ways I can improve performance is pretty simple, and I've already done this. It is to, instead of having a bunch of code to rotate, say, the entire heading label, I simply have a control base that rotates the entire label. It's one extra part per label, however, the actual performance is much less, like the performance impact. There are a few other ways that I improve performance, but they're mainly minor changes and I can't remember what most of them are. Now, the flight manager computer. This is a big one. Now, the flight manager computer has over 2,000 variables. Almost all of them, well, in fact, really all of them, are used to store data that you input into the flight manager computer, as well as stuff like changing pages. All of this does not need to run unless you are actively interacting with the computer. I've done some tests and I've found a few things. If you have a lot of variables, just in general, that will have a greater performance impact. Also, if you have more code in a variable, that also increases the performance impact, as you'd expect, because the game has to calculate all of that code. Now, selectors. If you have a selector that's a simple boolean, so if that's true, then just make the variable be itself, or just do some simple code. And then if it's false, run some really, really complex code, or any really more complex code. Then the complex code will not run unless the boolean is false. What this means is I can effectively disable all of these flight manager computer variables, all 2,000 of them, if you're not clicking a button. It's pretty simple to understand, at least for me. So this is the FMCL select option button. This is always zero unless you click it. And what I can do is, at least these are the FMCR, I'll just find the FMCL variables. Let's say I'll use one. I can just add this code at the very beginning, which is FMCL select option equals zero. If it's true, then just set the variable to itself. Otherwise, run the rest of the code. And that's really all there is to this. I just need a simple variable, which if true, then just don't run the rest of the code. And what I need to do now is copy this code, paste it into every single one of these variables, and then change the name that it's set to for each variable. This, as well as the other bugs that I've identified, will take me quite some time to fix, so I'll just do those off camera. And that will be it for this video. In my next video, I don't really know what I'll be doing for sure, but in the, at least in the next SWL 120 video, I'll probably be working on the autopilot. So I hope you all enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.